Here's a quick summary of what we have learned so far from the Daniel 7 prophecy. The four great beasts are four successive empires, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. The ten horns represent the divided Roman Empire that was taken over by barbaric tribes. The little horn comes up among the ten horns and plucks out three horns. If you want to learn more about the four beasts, click on the link at the end of this video. Now let's focus on six Bible points that help identify who the little horn of Daniel 7 really is. Point 1. What is the little horn? In Bible prophecy, horns represent kings, kingdoms, or political powers. Therefore, this little horn is a kingdom. Daniel 7.24 reads, The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. Point 2. When does the little horn appear? Daniel 7.8 reads, I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. This Bible passage tells us that this little horn came up after the ten horns, and then uprooted three of the horns. We know from history that the kingdoms of the Heruli, Ostrogoths, and Vandals were destroyed by the papal state because they did not accept certain papal mandates. This gives us a definite time frame for the rise of the little horn power. The little horn arises after the division of the Roman Empire, but before the destruction of the three kingdoms. The Western Roman Empire was divided into ten nations after 476 AD. Three of those nations, the Heruli, Ostrogoths, and Vandals, were destroyed by the year 538 AD. In 538 AD, Vigilus, the Bishop of Rome, ascended the papal throne under the protection of the Roman general Belisarius. Thus, 538 AD is the date for the establishment of papal Rome as an independent power. To qualify as a horn, this power must have the attributes of a kingdom, which indeed applies to the Vatican, which to this day is an independent state. The American Catholic Quarterly Review says this, Long ages ago, when Rome, through the neglect of the Western emperors, was left to the mercy of the barbarous hordes, the Romans turned to one figure for aid and protection, and asked him to rule them, and thus commenced the temporal sovereignty of the popes. So, meekly stepping to the throne of Caesar, the vicar of Christ took up the scepter to which the emperors and kings of Europe were to bow in reverence through so many ages. Point 3. How is the little horn different from the ten horns? Daniel 7.24 reads, The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. The papacy is different from the pagan kingdoms before it because it is both a political power and a religious power. Politically, the Vatican is a recognized state, complete with a traditional guard and its own postal service. The Vatican is the smallest state in the world. It occupies a mere 100 acres, but it has one of the strongest diplomatic bodies in the world. Papal representatives sit in the capitals of the world, and in turn these countries have their representatives in the Vatican. The Pope is not only head of the Church, but also temporal sovereign of the Vatican State. Point 4. How does the little horn speak pompous words against the Most High? This verse refers to blasphemy against God. What is the biblical definition of blasphemy? Definition 1. Claiming the power to forgive sins. Mark 2, 6 reads, And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? In this story, we see the first definition of blasphemy. Claiming the power to forgive sins. Definition 2. Claiming to be God. In John 5, 18, we read about another reason that the Jews wanted to kill Jesus for blasphemy. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. In the following references, you will see that the papacy claims to be able to forgive sins and claims to be God. Reference 1. From Ferrari's Dictionary. The Pope is of so great dignity and so exalted,
exalted that he is not a mere man, but as it were God and the vicar of God. He is likewise the divine monarch and supreme emperor and king of kings, so that if it were possible that angels might err in the faith or might think contrary to the faith, they could be judged and excommunicated by the Pope. Reference to from Bellarmine, all names which in the scriptures are applied to Christ, by virtue of which it is established that he is over the church, all the same names are applied to the Pope. Reference 3 from St. Alphonsus Liguri. The priest has the power of the keys, or the power of delivering sinners from hell, of making them worthy of paradise, and of changing them from slaves of Satan into children of God, and God himself is obliged to abide by the judgments of his priests. And either not to pardon or to pardon. When St. Michael comes to a dying Christian who invokes his aid, the holy archangel can chase away the devils, but he cannot free his client from the chains till a priest comes to absolve him. Reference 4. Question. Does the priest truly forgive the sins, or does he only declare that they are remitted? Answer. The priest does really and truly forgive the sins in virtue of the power given him by Jesus Christ. The papacy is is a blaspheming power. No other power on earth has dared to make such claims. Point 5. How does a little horn persecute the saints of the Most High? Daniel 7.25 reads, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High. Throughout history, the great wars of Europe were fought on religious grounds. The Protestants of Europe were relentlessly persecuted by Rome. Europe was plunged into the Thirty Years' War with the sole purpose of destroying the Protestant Reformation. The Waldenses, Albigenses, and Huguenots were relentlessly persecuted, and the Inquisition ordered the cruelest of punishments to be executed by the princes of Europe upon all those who refused to bow to the supremacy of Rome. In 1200 AD, Pope Innocent III ordered the King of France to exterminate the Albigenses because they refused to accept the papal teachings and regarded the Bible as the ultimate word of God. The historian Wiley says that more than a million of these innocent people were massacred in one single campaign. John Calvin, in a letter to Emperor Charles V, wrote this, I deny that C to be the Vicar of Christ, who, in furiously persecuting the gospel, demonstrates by his conduct that he is Antichrist. Point 6. How does the little horn change times and law? Daniel 7.25 reads, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Catholic catechisms show that the papacy has tried to change the law of God. The Ten Commandments have been tampered with. The Second Commandment, which refers to images and idols, is absent in Catholic literature. And to make up for the loss of one commandment, the Tenth is divided into two. The Fourth Commandment, which talks about the Sabbath becomes the third commandment in the Catholic Catechism. The day of worship is also shifted by papal decree from Saturday to Sunday. Let's look at Catholic references that prove that the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday without biblical authority. 1. Catholic Dr. Johann Eck, Luther's principal adversary, said this in 1533, There is no mention of the cessation of the Sabbath and the institution of Sunday in in the Gospels or in Paul's writings or in all the Bible. Therefore, this has taken place by the Apostolic Church instituting it without Scripture. Reference to From Catholic World The Church took the pagan philosophy and made it the buckler of faith against the heathen. She took the pagan Sunday and made it the Christian Sunday. There is, in truth, something royal, something kingly about the Son, making it a fitting emblem of Jesus, the Son of Justice. Hence, the Church in these countries would seem to have said, Keep the old pagan name it shall remain consecrated, sanctified, and thus the pagan Sunday dedicated to Balder became the Christian Sunday sacred to Jesus. Reference number three from Father Enright. The Bible says, Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Catholic Church says, No, by my divine power I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. 
Church. Reference 4 from Catechism Romanus. It pleased the Church of God that the religious celebration of the Sabbath day should be transferred to the Lord's Day, Sunday. Remember the laws and times mentioned in Daniel 7.25 are laws that God himself has established and time that God himself has set. The law that stands out throughout the Bible is the Ten Commandment Law. Point 7. How long will the saints be under the hand of the little horn? Daniel 7.25 reads, Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. In my next video, I will discuss the day-year principle and will explain what is meant by time, times, and half a time. Until next time, God bless you. Like, share, and subscribe to learn more about Bible prophecy.